Hello, and welcome to quite possibly the most nerdy video that currently exists on this channel. No promises in future. Um, what we're going to try today is um, at least part one of a plan that I've had for a while. If you've seen the retro videos I did a while back with a, an iMac G3, I mean, I filmed them on a crappy old camera, uh, but today I'm filming on real cameras, but we're try trying to do something a bit retro and a little bit weird. So what we're going to do is we're going to attempt, we're going to attempt to get some sort of music production system going on a PlayStation 2. Not a PS3 or a PS4, a PS2. So I don't know how successful we're going to be. It may be a complete failure, but we're going to start from the start and we're going to go on a little journey. So if you're a real kind of tech nerd and maybe you're also into audio production, maybe not, especially for this first part. What we're going to do is we're going to put Linux on a PlayStation 2 and see where we go from there. Now, the first thing that we have to talk about is what Linux on a PS2? How do you do that? So we've got to backtrack several steps. In front of us is one of the older, big, fat PlayStation 2s. Uh, this is my partner Mickey's PS2, so I've nicked it for the purposes of this video. And I way back when the PlayStation 2 was relatively new, saw my uncle uh, playing with a PlayStation 2, playing one of the GTA games off a hard drive. And I was going, hard drive? How? Now, the way to do it is the way that I've done here. This is no ordinary PS2 anymore, except it's not been modded. It's not been opened up and like there's no soldering, no engineering work. This has all been done by anyone who's not afraid to just jam two things together. This is essentially Lego in, in kind of nerd terms. So the first thing that you need to do anything that's even remotely interesting with a PlayStation 2, if you don't want to mod it, like I said, is have a memory card. And and it's got on it what's called Free McBoot. That's F R W E Mc M C B O O T. Free McBoot. Now this is a 64 megabyte memory card, which is the biggest one you could get. You don't need that. You can use just an an 8 megabyte one. But the software on this is very powerful. The software on here which means that we can run backups of PlayStation 2 games, homebrew software. Uh, we can kind of we can swap out uh, PlayStation One discs and play backups of them, and quite a few other little things. You can play MP3s on here and all sorts of stuff. It's pretty clever. Now people forget, but the PlayStation 2 had two USB ports on it. Now, at the time, they weren't very interesting. They didn't do much. They're not USB 2, they're USB 1. I'm going to put this memory card back. And they were largely unused unless you had, like, the PlayStation Eye toy camera, I think it was called. Uh, but we can use them. Now, the all the add-ons that I've got here... So, first thing's free McBoot. Let's go back a little. So the next thing I talked about is the hard drive. Now, how do you get a hard drive in a PlayStation 2? So the next thing you need is what's called the PS2 network adapter. It's a bit of a, a chunk that goes on the back. And there were a couple of games, especially released in Japan, I don't know about the rest of the world, where you could connect an Ethernet cable up to your PlayStation 2 and plug that into your router. And you could go online. So, or at least you could use online features. I think it was EverQuest or EverQuest 2. You could do, there was an MMO that worked on a PS2. And that worked using that. And I think you played it off the hard drive because they, as well as adding Ethernet, there is at the bottom of the network adapter, a IDE power and data connector for a hard drive. And there's a big hole and the bottom of a PS2, if you look closely at the big fat PS2s and look at the bottom grill, there's a huge hole. And it's big enough for a three and a half inch hard drive. Now, it has to be an IDE hard drive, although I have seen there are like mod kits to modify this network adapter to run with a, uh, a serial ATA, SATA, SATA, however you pronounce it, hard drive. But I've gone old school. I got a 160 gigabyte IDE hard drive. 
plopped it on there, slid the whole thing in the back of the PlayStation 2. There's a couple of big flat blade screws just to stop the whole thing falling off. And that's it. That's solid. So the next thing is the USB ports. Uh, one of them here is taken up by a USB stick, which in this case is a 32 gigabyte memory card. Way bigger than I actually need. It just so happens that I got that from the local computer exchange shop for eight pounds. They didn't actually have any smaller ones in. So I formatted that in FAT32. I mean, if, if you're going to do this, I'm hoping that you're kind of tech savvy and nerdy enough to know what that is, formatting in FAT32. Uh, you do have to do some sort of... Oh, do you? No. No, you don't have to do anything special for up to 32 gigabytes. It's above that you have to do all sorts of crazy stuff. Anyway, the last thing that I have on here, and this isn't something you need. This is something that I've borrowed off my friend Chris, and I'm going to buy one for myself, is there's a little unit on the back called PS2 to HDMI. And that does exactly what it says. It converts the uh, composite, or is it component output? One of the outputs on the back, uh, it converts the whole thing to HDMI, which makes it not only easier to capture, I should have a capture card pretty soon, I, unfortunately I don't today, so I'm using one of the other cameras to capture the screen. And it also means it's easier with you know monitors, flat screens, to just plug it in if your TV doesn't have the old analog inputs. Or if you use an HDMI switcher or whatever, keeps it simple, makes it work. And so far, I've had no problems with that. So, let's turn on the TV, and then we'll turn on the PS2, and you'll see how different it looks. See, free McBoot is the first thing that's come up. And then it comes up with something that looks a lot like, but not exactly like, the PlayStation's initial boot, the BIOS. Except this has the classic browser, which is the memory card thing that you'll have seen. System for configuration, which again is standard. Now, you launch ELF. If you've got an ELF file, that is a file that can boot as a program on a PlayStation 2. Now, there are several different ELFs, and a lot of these underneath here... These are ELFs as well. So there's, uh, I'm not entirely sure how to use ESR, Open PS2 Loader, which can load uh, PlayStation 2 games. I think it can do them from copy disk. I'm not sure on that, but I know it can load them from the hard drive. Simple Media System plays uh, MP3 files, and WAV files, and what have you. HD Loader is a hard drive loader. That can also back up your genuine PlayStation 2 discs to the hard drive. Pad tester is what it says. SNES station is like an SNES uh, emulator where if you stick a lot of ROMs on there, you can play all your SNES games on the PlayStation 2, which is pretty cool. Code breaker, if I remember rightly, is like a cheats thing. And then there's a couple of extra things. So what we want to look at today, if we're going to install Linux on the PS2, is I'm following an, an online tutorial where I've already gone ahead and downloaded several files and put them onto the uh, the USB stick. So we want him run, you launch ELF. Now, no disk, yeah, fine. So, we get a choice of which thing we want to use. So today we want to look in the mass storage, which is the USB, mass storage USB. Give it a minute to open it. There we go. Now there's a ton of stuff going on on this particular USB stick. But in the meantime, let's look in the PS2 Linux folder. Have I... I have not put the loader in here. Have I? Huh. Well, let's run this K loader ELF. Oh, no. Let, actually, let's just try... I'm not around. I'm just going to copy this.
Wow, that is slow. Anyway, let's run Kloader 3.0. Because as far as I can tell, Kloader is the program that lets you load a K kernel, so a Linux kernel, which means that in theory, at least, ah, loading, please wait. Um, is it going to try? I might have to get a different file for this. No, 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 no. Okay, so I was supposed to jump through a few hoops there, but it would seem... that uh, I've already set up how to boot this thing. So as you can see, this is a very slow version of booting uh, Linux. So it's changing root. Okay, so as you can see, it's um, if you've ever watched a Linux boot on a very new computer, you will kind of, if you have very fast eyes and a fast refresh rate on the screen, you might see some of this fly by. But in terms of kind of the real world, this is what we see on a very slow Linux. Right, so I've plugged in the USB keyboard because one thing that I didn't mention before is that as well as the USB stick, the other USB port is in use and that's going to a USB to hub. Uh, one of those is going to power that PS2 to HDMI thing that's on the back uh, because that needs some power and usually if you're not using the USB sockets on the PS2 it's just quite a convenient way to, to power the thing and the other one's going to this USB keyboard um, apologies for the mess on here as you can see it's uh, quite a kind of tangle of wires but there's a reason for that and the reason is that I'm trying experimenting with all this this is not usually how the studio would be Ah, it's never going to uh, connect the network if I don't. Ah. Now, um, this seems to be that I have, oh, hello. Oh, it works. I mean, there's no mouse plugged in right now. What, let's see what happens if I plug in a moose. This is NetSurf, by the way. So this is kind of, I've, I found, I found a, oh, wow, that actually works. That's a working mouse on a PlayStation 2. So go, Google search. Derp. Let's see what happens. Uh, of course, it's not going to work because I didn't plug in the, uh, yeah, IF but ETH0.
Well, that was never going to do what we wanted it to anyway, because what I really want to do is install Linux on here, not just run it live off the USB stick. So, let's go and take the USB and uh, get a version of Kloader that doesn't just automatically go. Okay, let's try it again. And this time... Oh, another little accessory that I have is an extension cable for my uh, PS2 controller, which means that I'm not kind of tethered and I can sit further back, which were the largest screens that we have compared to when the uh, PS2 is designed. means my life is a little easier. Hello. Strange quirk of this whole thing is that if you've got the mouse and keyboard plugged in when you launch uh, the launch ELF, it suddenly kind of seems to break it. Which is a massive pain in the backside. Okay, so if we go to mass storage. Let it load up for a second. PS2 Linux. K loader. Now hopefully this is gonna come straight up and it's gonna go. Where oh where is my thing? Might have to get a different version of the kernel loader. Aha. Edit kernel parameter. Nope. USB keyboard. Hmm. This USB keyboard's a pain in the backside. It seems to be bricking everything. Let's try it one more time without the keyboard. Now the reset light's going yellow, and I've never seen that on a PlayStation before, but we're doing some pretty advanced stuff. I also found that there's yellow light underneath where the controllers go that flickers when you do uh, hard drive access, which I've never seen before. Let's try this one more time. PS2 Linux K loader. Oh, if I look like I've been uh, scratching myself, by the way, that's because uh, the dogs that are upstairs got a bit giddy before and got up onto me and were trying to be affectionate and at the same time scratching me right up. Which is painful. Now, um... That's fine. Advanced menu, it's in advanced menu now. Uh, so, select kernel, USB memory stick. VM Linux, select RAM disk, USB memory stick, PS2 Linux, init RD. 
configuration menu. I should be doing something here, apparently. Uh, disable no oh, module list. Host DMA. Looks like that's no longer a thing. Our DMA relay is already off. Okay, so. What did I do? I pressed R2, that seems to be doing things. Oh God. Well, that's, this was weird. Seems to be cycling through video modes. Yeah. Note to self, pressing R2 at the wrong time is not good. Select or start maybe. See if, if I go up to the top, if there's maybe a, uh, yeah, configuration menu. Boot current config. Let's see what happens. So we're going to boot this version of Linux, maybe. Uh, that in it rd I must say as much as I am kind of a, a complete nerd I very much have no idea what I'm doing with the with this whole scene this is just a journey into the unknown copying files and start I'm gonna plug in. Oh. Ah, so we're at a prompt and that was a lot quicker than it has been. So let's try give being, let's try F disk slash dev slash H D A. Hmm. Can't open dependencies file. Let's try the other version. IDA slash host zero slash bus zero slash target zero slash LUN zero slash disk. Hmm. Might have to get a different version of K loader on this USB stick up in here. Okay, we're back, and it turns out that I found there is another version of that VM Linux that uses DevFS, which is what apparently you're supposed to use when you're installing from a USB stick. Because otherwise, the thing's not got a clue what you're talking about. So, let's try all this one more time. Persistence is the key to victory. Also, knowing what you're talking about, but hey. <laughs> right, so, I know that the DMA relay is disabled by default. So, what I need... Is a 
uh, to go to the advanced menu. File menu. Restore defaults. Uh, so if we select kernel, that is to say the one from PS2 Linux with devfs in the name. Select the RAM disk as being in its erd and go. Let's see what happens this time. Hopefully with the whole devfs thing we should get a little bit further. Here's hoping. Like I said, this is a USB 1 on the front of this, not USB 2, which is why it takes forever to load anything off it. If I remember rightly, it's like 1.5 megabits or something stupid. Uh, it's a wonder it works at all with a 32 gigabyte yes, uh, yes, uh, USB stick. But hey, it does, and that's great. Because it means we can do things. Oh, that loaded up really quick again. So, let's drop the controller, of course. Plug in a keyboard. If that was, in fact, the keyboard that got plugged in. Aha! Now the keyboard does things. Now, F disk. Because FDisk is the program that formats everything. So FDisk slash dev slash IDE slash host zero slash bus zero slash target zero slash lon zero slash disk. Zero, bus zero. Hmm. Why you'll take so long? What have we got in Dev? in IDE. I wonder if maybe in transport the hard drives come loose. Let's turn off everything and come back to this in five minutes with a screwdriver and a plan. Okay, so I took the back off of the, the I took the network adapter off the back of the PS2 and it did look like maybe the hard drive had come a bit loose in transit. So I pushed it together. This is HD loader. Uh, this is a completely separate app where you can install uh, and play uh, PS2 games off the hard drive. And it was saying now, now that I've put it in, I could hear the hard drive were and it asked me to format the hard drive, so it's now formatted in HD loaders, or well, the Toxic OS format or whatever it is that the PlayStation uses. So that's an improvement, I think. From here, we can now reset the thing. Because it, I know now that it can see the hard drive and I know that it can see the size of it and that it's formatted it in a format that's not compatible with Linux, but the point stands, you know, it, it, it does something. So. You launch Elf. Yes, I do. Loading HDD modules, it didn't do this before. So it's entirely possible that I've just been being a bit stupid and I've been trying to <laughs> trying to do this whole thing with just the hard drive disconnected. <laughs> ah 
But at least this has given us sufficient time to talk through the rest of the system. You know? Okay, so... Advanced menu. Select kernel. Memory stick. The one with DevFS, select RAM disk, init erd, boot current config. So let's see what happens. The, uh, the inevitable wait again. Starting modules, let's see what happens. Partition check. There we go. We can see it. And now it's going to complain that that's not right, which is fine. Because that's what we're looking for now. Let's do what we did before and hope that it doesn't give us some... Oh yeah, I need to plug in the keyboard. Give that a second to... Uh... Come on. Oh, hello. Oh, kernel panic. What? Wow. I think I jammed too many keys while I was plugging in that keyboard. Ah, killed it. Let's try again. We'll get there. We'll get there eventually. This is excruciating. If this is anything near as excruciating for you as it is for me, you have my sympathies. Because I'm the one sat here trying to do this thing at half nine on a Friday night. Yay! Mass storage. Come on, let's fly through this one. We don't need to kind of tutorialize it this time. Let's just get through it. Get back to that prompt. Not have a kernel panic. Keyboard in now and hit go. And is that killed it? Oh my lord. Okay, this is a problem that I had before. So, what I'm going to do just for now because, because the PS to to HDMI thing doesn't need a data connection. I'm just gonna power that off of a completely separate powered USB hub because that doesn't need any. Come on, come back online. Doesn't need any sort of data connection, and then I'm gonna plug the keyboard straight. In and see if that does the trick. See if it's this USB hub, or at least even the idea of a hub that's screwing it up. Damn you, troubleshooting! I mean, how hard can it be? No, let's let's not go down that path. That's a dark path. So launch ELF doesn't work at all with a keyboard plugged in, which is really stupid. We'll get this eventually. It's like pulling teeth. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Starting modules. Right, now. Let's 
it can see the hard drive partition check is going to moan attach SCSI removable disk SDA great so let's put this keyboard on here and just wait a minute see if that just give it a good minute or so wow so okay so it really seems where it was kind of working before it's giving me a right so it looks like I'll have to plug that in at perfectly the right time I knew this was going to be tricky, but I didn't think this part would be the tricky part. This is turning into a Druaga 1 video. If you've not watched Druaga 1, you should watch some of his stuff, because he's pretty funny. Uh, I just happened to see one of his videos, by pure coincidence, it came up recommended, and I just laughed so much. I mean, it's really not the best shot stuff, and it's not even the best technically, it's just really amusing if you're... Uh, a nerd and if you've got some time as well which at the time I started watching his videos I did Huh. It seems that doing that has uh, screwed it up. So when can you plug in a keyboard? Da. Oops. Um. Come on. PS2 Linux K loader. Also, if you're wondering what I'm whistling while I'm doing this for some reason I've got half the world away by Oasis in my head which is a very nice song and is the theme if you're not already aware to a an old British comedy series called the royal family which was actually about a, a kind of a, a family that were normal people living in a house which doesn't sound too interesting but was actually hilarious to watch Now let's load these up before sticking the uh, keyboard in, in the, the, the vain hope that it might not freeze the entire system when I do this. Let's let that blink for a little while. Oh, God. Let's see what happens if I... Because originally I had the USB stick in the plug-in port. I don't know if that makes any difference. And let's get the... Uh, let's get the hub back in there. Unable to handle a kernel paging request. Okay. 
let's just use the uh, the non. Let's just use the non DevFS kernel as well and see if that doesn't crash. Because I seem to be having more success before we realised that the hard drive wasn't properly connected. One more time before this video turns into uh, throwing something through a wall. The non DevFS one. Here we go. Hmm. Really need to shave. You can do it. Give it a minute to respond. Hopefully, we don't get a kernel panic. Because that's just ri that's ridiculous. Right. Well, it's time for a quick Google. Also, let's power that off properly just to make sure everything's uh, PS2 Linux kernel panic keyboard. Okay. Well, this video was useless but this is kind of the end of part one i'm going to go away and do a bit of research see if there's a reason why i'm getting these uh kernel panics because that wasn't happening before so uh we've got to a point where technically i can boot linux on a ps2 and um, hopefully i'll be able to get that installed on the hard drive then we'll be able to see where we're at and if there's any way of getting an interface on there like a graphical interface then see if we can get anything else running but this may be a single part series, depending on how far we get, but hopefully you've enjoyed the journey. Um, sorry it was such a long video, but hey, these are the trials and tribulations of, fl of, of messing around with old hardware that was never designed for this purpose. So I may just uh, convert that hard drive back into that HD loader format and put some of my old games on there so that I don't have to worry about scratching up the discs anymore. We'll see. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Adam, I'm Adam Steele for the Hot Pulse Studios, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this, feel free to check out our other videos, as you can find here, or check out our Facebook and Twitter, or our Patreon page, which helps us to make more videos like this. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.